Hey everyone, this is Pastor Bell with just a quick word, and today I want to talk about prayer. And we're going to start a series called Praying with God this weekend, and I invite you to come and check that out. You can join us online, or you can join us in person at St. John Lutheran Church. But today I want to ask you a question about prayer, and that question is how much of your life is guided by and grounded in prayer? So when I was in seminary, I had an older, wiser pastor say to me that when you preach, Everything that you do with that sermon should be grounded in and guided by prayer. So the text you are going to choose, if you're not using a lectionary, the words you are going to say, the ideas that you are going to bring up, the interpretation of the scripture that you use, all of that should be guided by prayer. How you are going to share the gospel, the words that you're going to say, and how you are going to use those words to reach people for the sake of the gospel, all of that should be grounded and guided by prayer. And the rule of thumb they gave me was that for every minute you preach, you should spend at least two minutes in prayer. So if you are going to preach for 15 minutes, then you should spend a solid half hour in prayer about that sermon and what God is calling you to say and how God is calling you to say it. Now, that's a really good rule of thumb that I found useful over the years. And while I've never been perfect with it, and some sermons have reflected that, it has been something I've taken very seriously because preaching is the most public part of my ministry. It's when I have the opportunity to reach the most people at once. And so I take very seriously and pray a lot about how I'm going to preach and what I'm going to preach about. But I think it's not just my preaching that needs to be grounded in and guided by prayer, and I think it's not just preachers that need to be guided by and grounded in prayer. It's our whole lives, and it's all of God's people that need to do this. Because I'm also a husband, and so the way that I treat my wife, the way that we treat our spouses, shouldn't that be guided by and grounded in prayer? I'm a a parent. I have three kids. The way that I parent them, shouldn't that be guided by and grounded in prayer? And if it's not, the other question we should ask is, then what is guiding us? Because very often when we react in the heat of the moment, when we react without thinking, without taking a moment to pray, it ain't prayer and it ain't the Holy Spirit that's guiding it. I know that when I react in anger, it's my anger that's guiding me, or my anxiety that's guiding me, or my politics that are guiding me, or just some deep-seated rage about something else that has nothing to do with what's going on in the moment that's guiding me, and that's not healthy, and it's not helpful. And I'm willing to bet that for some of you who are listening, you've had a similar experience. But I think when we take a moment to pray, or if you like better, when you take a moment simply to, to stop and reflect collect your thoughts, and think about what you want to say next. When we do that, the result is better. When I take a moment to pray, even if it's just, God, help me to say the right thing, it seems to turn out better than if I just go off the cuff, or if I just react, or if I just try to be as clever as my mind will allow me to be. Because I think I do better as a person, not just a pastor, but as a person, when I am grounded in and guided by prayer. Because when I do that, that's when I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to speak in me and to speak through me. And I would suggest that if you're willing to do the same, you will find that the outcome is better for you as well. I would like to invite that you should work to ground your life and let your life be guided by prayer. And now I'm not saying every little decision needs to be prayed over. I'm not saying when it's lunchtime you go in and say, Dear Lord, let me find the right sandwich for this day. Amen. But when it comes to the big decisions, when it comes to the most public decisions, when it comes to the words you're going to share with the most people, and all of us have a big microphone now with social media, when it comes to the decisions that are going to impact others the most, take that time to pray about it. Let your words and your actions be grounded in and guided by prayer. And I'm willing to bet that you will find that the outcome is better than when you don't. And I also think that you should take time to reflect. We should all take time to reflect that when we are not guided by prayer, when we are not guided by the Spirit, what are the other forces that are guiding us? Is it our anger? Is it our anxiety? Is it our rage? Is it our politics? Is it our upbringing? Is it our whatever, some deep-seated wound within us? And in those moments, how do we bring ourselves back to prayer so that we might have a better 
guide and a better grounding. So I'm going to say a lot more about prayer over the next few weeks in the sermon, but today I just wanted to say, ask yourself that question. How much of your life is not guided by and grounded in prayer? And for the parts that aren't, what else is guiding them? And how can you be more intentional with your prayer life so that the words that you speak and the actions that you take, particularly towards others, but even towards yourself, are more grounded by prayer and by time with God? And I think the more intentional we can be with our prayer lives, the more that we can ground ourselves in prayer, and the better the outcomes will be for us, for the little decisions, for the everyday decisions, and for the big decisions as well. That's it for this week. I hope to see you this weekend one way or another, but have a good one and God bless. Bye now.